What's going on guys? Uh, I promised y'all that I'd have a part two and here is part two. So this is going to be more of a gear centric. I fucking hate talking about gear. So this is like, um, this is pretty annoying for me, but uh, honestly, there are some points that probably should be made well in advance before any of y'all plan to sign up for Tusk or going to Tusk. And I just figured I'd get some of the questions out of the way. Again, I'm not trying to give away the class. That's a disservice, not just to the organizers, the cadre, the Direct Action Resource Center, and all the people involved, and all the students who paid money for it. But it's also a disservice to you. Uh, I'm wasting your time. If you sit here and watch the video and think that somehow it's going to make you an expert, uh, you're wrong. I'm wasting your time. Uh, this is great if you're planning on going. Um, and this is, video is really just for you. This video isn't for anyone who thinks that they can just watch it and then they're an expert or they don't need to do anything else. Uh, as always, all these are just, this is just equipment and it needs a skill set behind it. But I mean, I could go ad nauseum about that. So uh, I was using a Spiritus thing too with the Mark V chest rig or the placard or whatever you want to call it, the scalable system. And uh, it worked out pretty well. There are definitely some things that I wish I would have done a little differently. But there were also some things that worked well, um, and then some things that I quickly figured out didn't work well. So, from left to right, I'll just kind of work my way across, and then I'll address points as needed. So, water, big, 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 big deal. Uh, it cannot be harped on enough. There's a reason why when everyone leaves Tusk, they talk about water, and this is why. You should have water on your load-bearing gear. And by load-bearing gear, I don't mean your ruck, although you should have water in your ruck. You should have a lot more water in your ruck, but you should have some water on your kit. Uh, if you're wearing a load-bearing belt, you know, canteens, uh, camelback, Nalgene, etc. If you're wearing a chest rig, same thing. Have, you know, a Nalgene. I have a flat attack or decor one liter flask here. Keep that on there or keep a canteen and USGI. This is an Eagle Industries pouch. Um, I've done the overview of this chest rig before. It's changed a little bit since then, but my point still stands. Get water on this thing. Um, it, it could be those mini water bottles. It could be a 16 ounce Nalgene. It could be a 32 ounce. It doesn't matter. You have some water on there. You're going to regret very quickly, very, very quickly, not having water on your person. Um, you might do cumulative events and you know, guess what? You're it's hot if you're taking it during the summer, or you know your mouth is dry because it's windy and it's cold, and you need something to kind of like moisten your mouth, I guess. You know, and I make it sound weird, but you're gonna need water, and I highly recommend with whatever water you have, you have some way to purify it. I I don't have them in there right now. I use them, but chemical tablets and then something like liquid IV to kind of take away the nasty flavor um, and also replace all those electrolytes and salts that your body lost or loses through sweating and exertion. So uh, water, a way to clean it or at least chemically purify it. And the reason why chemically purifying more than anything is because you should be, as part of your water plan, you should be doing all of your filtration, uh, you know, with large containers, you should be doing it in, in mass and bulk and it takes a while. But you could scoop up that water if it's still chemically filtering or if you haven't chemically filtered yet. And you can just scoop up that water once it's been filtered throughout all its points. You're at your final chemical purification point and you just throw those tabs in there and let it work while you're walking. I don't recommend it, but it is one way to kind of expedite the process a little. Uh, you'd be surprised how quickly you ran out of time for stuff. But I never had to do it, but I did end up using those tablets anyways. And then the liquid IV, obviously, for, like I said... Uh, replenishing electrolytes and flavoring because chemically treated water tastes like shit. So, um, have a training tourniquet. It's on the packing list, uh, I believe. It was on mine, at least. Uh, have a training tourniquet. It, you may or may not use it. Uh, that's as far as I'll go. Just make sure to have one or two on you. Have um, chem lights. Uh, I keep mine in the foil. Uh, you should probably do that yourself. It gives them longevity and it protects them from... If they crack, they're not going to spill all over you, and then you're going to be glowing green in the dark. But have chem lights on you. Um, you, you. We used chem lights a lot for marking 
or even if you're I was a team leader so if you're leading and you need to check a map or you need to read a document or a, a list or something it, it's good to have that chem light kind of accessible if you need to have that little for whatever reason you can't use white light you can just cut a little bit out of it use it for the illumination tape it back up or do whatever but realistically it's for marking um and you you'll you'll find situations where you want to mark you carry full size you carry mini chem lights it's up to you but i highly recommend having some sort of chem light on you um if anything for signaling or for safety if you fell got lost or got hurt it's easier for people to find you um moving on the uh spiritus mark V, i believe it's a molly placard panel thing carried just three ar mags in there um and then i have this blue force gear boo boo pouch on it and then these two blue force gear 10 speeds i'm a big blue force gear guy i think they make great stuff uh because it's light hydrophobic you know waterproof whatever so in the boo boo pouch i kept little useful things this thing uh a cut up signaling panel used it just um down lead for when i wasn't using my camo in ear and a little whistle and compass and I'll work those from left to right. So whistle I never use, but I'm, you know, you know, you never know if you're going to need it or not. Like I said, you could hurt yourself on a patrol or something, or you might need a signal at an event or whatever. And a whistle is a great way uh, of implementing an alternate or contingency signal, auditory signal, at least into your pace plan. Uh, but attached to there's a compass of uh, the the training area isn't huge, but it's very varied, and I highly recommend you have a compass with degree notations on you. Don't just get one of those little button compass that says like north, south, east, west, and that's it. This was my quick reference compass. I have an actual Kamenga in my fanny pack, and that's for actual serious use. But this was really quick. I could pull it off. I could pull it out. I could just reference it like, okay, cool, we're still going north. We didn't get turned around, going through the brush or something. And as always, trust but verify. Um, it's on a bungee so I don't lose it. It's also on a bungee so I could stand it off away from my kit as best as I could to kind of minimize that, uh, you know, ferrous metals creating uh, interference and messing with that. But, uh, I use it. I definitely use this compass and it was fine. So yeah, I highly recommend having a way to navigate, even if in your kit, it's a full size Kamenga or Silva. Or it's something like this, this little Brunton that's just a quick reference guide. Uh, combo down lead. Yep. Uh, I don't really need to explain this too much. Sometimes I was using a trucker mic with our radios uh, because we were stationary and we were setting up basically like a, a sleep plan or whatever. And so dudes were resting and there's no, it, it's going to be really shitty for everyone if they have to come up to me to access the radio because we didn't all have radios or it was just easier that way. So, you know, just a quick way to keep my down lead there. And I would switch to a just a trucker mic and then keep it on low volume. So whoever's on watch or guard can have that and they don't have to have it in their ear. They don't have to, you know, worry about that. It's just easy to pass and go. Signal panel, highly recommend uh, carrying some way to signal visually during the day and at night. So at night, dudes like to use buzz saws or strobes and that's cool. But don't forget that during the day, you've got stuff like this. You pull it out, you deploy it, whatever you're going to do, whatever your plan is. And this bad boy uh, is great for marking entryways, marking dangerous areas, marking just where you're at to your buddies. That's important. A lot of times you might end up split up from other people for whatever reason, or you might occupy a structure and you're defending it and you don't want to get assaulted by your buddies who saw some movement there and then i'm sure oh hey this is op four uh or these are you know we just got shot from this direction let's go see what's going on at least you can signal like hey like this is where we're at and then obviously you have to talk that amongst yourselves or whatever but definitely have a way to identify yourself in the day or identify locations of no avenues of approach etc and this helps that's all I was in the boo boo pouch. There might have been some mini chem lights in there. I used them. Sorry. Uh, actual IFAC. This is um, this is actual medical supplies in it. I could open it up. It's nothing super special. The circ, you know, it's got 
NPA that probably needs to be replaced, some purification tabs, chest seal. You know, it's a regular little bleed out kit, gunshot wounds. Uh, definitely keep that on you. you. Accidents happen, you could fall, tumble down a hill or something, stab yourself with a log, stab yourself with a knife, and you now have a massive hemorrhage problem that you need to fix. So definitely I would recommend keeping real IFAC contents on you and then having a training tourniquet or a real tourniquet if you don't care about money. But having all of those methods, uh, having a real dedicated first aid methods beyond just a boo-boo kit and then having some, you know, things happen. You're out in the woods and ambulance is going to take a minute to get to you and you don't want to bleed out before an ambulance can get to you. So other chem light just to kind of fill up room and just have multiples but then finally i had the jsta the spiritus jsta pouch and i uh I, sometimes i'll use it for magazines but during tusk i didn't use it for magazines its primary purpose was to hold my night vision and then give me some admin space so i have this bungee on there that just controls its swing nothing super crazy but my nods would fit in there they're in my safe right now but i'll just keep my nods in there and then close that and then bungee that over just to keep them nice and secure in there. So if the flap fails, at least they're being kept in there by friction, but this would make sure the flap doesn't fail. Behind it, <clears throat> unfortunately, I had to downgrade magazine amounts because I had to do team, le team leader stuff. So where I would keep a magazine, I said, buddy made me this uh, little zipper insert. And I just kept more team leader -y stuff, some more admin things. So, batteries, small notebook, protractor, just a visible IR flag, just to, you know, give me that way to identify friend or foe, or identify myself to other dudes with nods. Um, and then behind it, radio pocket, radio pocket for the thing too. I kept a spare mag in one, and then I kept a... Uh, I kept the radio in the other one, and that's just how it went. It's uh, it's definitely interesting being a uh, having to work on some more of the field admin stuff. It's not what I would call difficult. Well, you know, it is a little difficult, but it's different. So that's kind of why I have to sacrifice some bags. You're kind of trusting that your dudes are, you know, putting in doing what they have to do. If God forbid you get attacked. But you also need, you know, you you're also need to be thinking about all the other ways that, all the other things you need to do, all the other tasks. You might need to navigate. You might need to organize. One thing I don't show you here is I had my leader's book. Uh, it had map markers, overlays, etc., notes, and I would tuck that behind the chest rig. Um, just back here, I would just tuck it here. It was uncomfortable, and then it all of a sudden wasn't uncomfortable. I think it just depends on the shirt I was wearing. But I kept that everywhere, and I think. More than anything, that was one of the things that I'm glad I had was just a little book with the map, with a map, markers and notes and stuff like that because there's a lot of information to retain, not just from a classwork point of view, but like when you're out doing stuff, you're going to want a notebook to, you know, uh, note points of interest or figure out timelines or even just demonstrate to the rest of your team like, hey, this is what we're doing. And I'm going to draw a super hasty uh, sketch of what our plan is. And then these are like, you know, if you hear this, if you hear this over the radio or, if, you know, if you see this, you're just, you, you conduct like a very hasty rehearsal with it. And, you know, obviously map, important. But that's it really much for my chest rig. Unfortunately, my ruck, my fanny pack, it's all soaking in water right now, being cleaned. I chose poor timing and... Well, I could go back and show it to you. I'm just going to be, I'll just run through some quick ideas. Number one, you're going to want an assault pack in addition to your rucksack. That assault pack needs to fit inside or on the outside of your rucksack. Um, Mystery Ranch makes a compressible one. There's different options out there. You, you want something in drive colors that can be carried with you because sometimes you're going to leave your ruck somewhere and you're going to take your assault pack for a quick you know, hour, two hour thing. And then other times you're going to need to carry everything on you so that a salt pack needs to be emptied or it needs to be lashed onto the outside. Some of them clip in, others are very small so they roll up nice and, you know, nice and comfortable like. 
and, and I highly recommend you figure out a solution to that. Uh, the class recommends a 50 to 60 liter ruck, I believe. Um, I was using the Crossfire DG3, and I can tell you it is just enough for what I wanted to do. What kind of hit me hard was the bulk of uh, food, food bulk, more than anything. I was also carrying a jet boil, and I can be quite honest with you, I, I didn't use it. I had a lot of food that didn't need to be heated. Uh, again, don't take that to be gospel. I know if you're going in like an earlier, you know, a, a class co closer to winter, you might have those conditions where you're definitely going to appreciate a warm meal. I went in September, so it was all summer considerations. So you're, you know, usually the rule of thumb is for, for hot weather, you can kind of lighten your pack a little bit which is fine. And then for colder weather, it tends to get a little heavier because you need a lot more sustainment and survivability gear, you know, cold weather gear, et cetera. So I never ended up heating my food. I had a jet boil with me. I took up a bunch of space. I could have easily not had that jet boil and just kept that food. But definitely where a lot of bulk came in was from off the shelf food. I brought like Chef Boyardee. I, I just kind of try to simulate like, okay, cool. If I'm grabbing stuff from a pantry, what would it look like? So I grabbed bagels. Shout out to Adam from Spiritus for, you know, mentioning bagels in his video. And now that's just a big thing I'm always getting. I grabbed, uh, you know, Chef Boyardee, tuna packets, tortillas, stuff like that. Uh, candy, Cliff Bars, uh, applesauce, stuff like that. And it, it, you know, it made its way into my diet in different ways. But unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is very bulky. So you either need to account for that in your load plan figure out a supplement to that, be it mountain houses, which are also kind of bulky, or MREs, which are like, to me, they're kind of one of the standards in terms of field food. Everyone hates them except for me. That's not true, but a lot of people don't like them, and they're right to not like them, but just per space and per weight, the calorie count and the taste is unmatched. It's pretty, pretty good uh, compared to some of the other things I've tried from other countries or some of the other solutions, I just, I genuinely like MREs and I think they're an effective way to carry calorie dense nutrition in the field. This is no exception. So, um, let's look away from my chest rig and let's take a look at some of the, uh, a few things that I liked having and a few things that I didn't like having. So, uh, here we have a list of things that I think you should really take in addition to the packing list. Some of it's on there, others, is, uh, other things aren't, but these are all things that definitely improve my quality of life. And then by default, my training value. Um, the less miserable you are, the more you'll be able to pay attention in class. While it isn't always the case, um, by far and large, you're going to want to pay attention and take a ton of notes. So uh, from the start, we'll just work from top to bottom. So definitely take bug netting and standoff. Um, so I had bug netting. I had a hammock uh, bug net. And it was good. It was adequate netting. It did its job, except I didn't have a good way to stand it off from my head and my arms. So I'm sleeping there. I'm trying to sleep in a t-shirt and then like the rest of my gear, whatever, just to kind of, you know, cool off and be fine. And the mosquitoes would find their way because the bug netting would touch my skin and then it, it wouldn't do its job of creating standoff between you and a mosquito bite. Same goes for ticks, same goes for everything. You need some way of standoff. So um, figure that out. Don't just go there with a big mosquito netting roll and think like, oh, this is everything. Have something that is, you know, has standoff and is quick to deploy and then quick to take down. Those are both really important. You never know if you're going to have to pick up in the middle of the night and move somewhere else for whatever reason. That's as far as I'm going to go there. Uh, also, make sure if it isn't already, make sure it is treated with permethrin. Um, Pre-treat everything with permethrin. Don't treat anything that goes on your head or your face with permethrin. You're going to figure out real quick, like I did the first night, that my forehead itched like crazy. And that was because I had permethrin on a hat and I started sweating through it and then it ended up getting having a reaction on my skin. It wasn't a big deal. I, I washed my face uh, with wet wipes and alcohol and I was able to get rid of it and then it was fine for the rest of the class. But it's just something to consider. So next is map markers, especially if you're a leader. If you are going, if you know you're going in a team leader position or you want to be a team leader and it's being assigned over there, 
Make sure you bring map markers. The Stadler, or however it's pronounced, it's a German company. Those are pretty good. Make sure you have map markers. Make sure you have something laminated to write on. Um, you know, make sure you have multicolored map markers. You'd be surprised at how quickly or how, how many things you want to write up on a map or on an overlay. And you, you, you need to color code it for quick reference. If you, you know, whatever you want. I'm not going to give it away, but just make sure you have map markers a way to, and then a way to clean it, you know. In the absence of anything, if you're using permanent markers, hand sanitizer, any alcohol-based cleaner works. Uh, a watch, uh, uh, it's pretty fucking funny how little this one is mentioned, and it's probably one of the most important ones. You want every, honestly, everyone should have a watch. I'm a fucking hardcore watch nerd, but beyond that, we ended up having to pass around a watch, and it's, it, you know, it's no one's fault. You, you don't know what you don't know, but if you have to do shift work of some sort, be it like, hey... We have, you know, you're going to pull guard on this area, or you're going to pull security on this area, you're going to be doing this until this time. You need a watch. If you're a leader, you especially need a watch. It is non negotiable. Have a good watch with a backlight of some sort or a tritium vials. Like I know Marathon makes one like that. Or, you know, if it's glow in the dark or it has something like a, you know, like a, a lot of automatic or luxury watches, have something that you can read in the dark. Um, a lot of dudes will default to digital watches. I agree. Digital watches are great. Just make sure if you have a digital watch, all your alarms are set off. Um, and that the tone is also turned off. Most, if not all of the ones I've come across, you can turn off the tone. Definitely do that. The last thing you want to hear is beep, 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 beep. Because you're trying to turn off, you know, you're trying to set a stopwatch or a timer or something. So definitely bring a watch. Um, that backlight can be an issue at night. Uh, assuming that your opposition might may or may not have night vision thermal whatever they they might be able to detect that light and it's just poor light discipline so if you're going to have a watch you know set make it so that it doesn't light up on its own for whatever reason and make sure that the back tone isn't uh on but definitely have a watch um super duper important uh, i i definitely uh, think it's mandatory for the course especially if you're going to be a leader uh, next is Empty Notebook. Uh, I kind of harped on that one a lot. I'm going to continue harping on it. Uh, bring an empty notebook, a big empty notebook. Um, you, you're going to take a ton of notes, and you're going to realize really quickly that you're going to need every one of those notes once you leave because you're going. it's going to dawn on you that you're exhausted, you're tired, and you're not going to remember anything. Something like these, just a spiral right in the reins. They could take more than enough notes. For the class, just dedicate that notebook to the class. Um, you don't want to be the dude writing stuff on like leaf paper or something, and then you lose it, and then it's all gone. Take good notes. Um, those map markers are great for color coding notes or highlighting, you know, the points that you know important notes to you or things you might want to circle back on, ask questions on, because the, the classes there's a lot to cover, and you're going to feel like an idiot if you just decide like oh, I'm not going to take notes, and then. Two weeks later, you've forgotten all of it. Um, definitely take notes. It is, a notebook is important as fuck. Uh, water supplement, uh, to include flavoring. That's why it's like a subtext there. But water supplement, uh, what I mean is you're going to lose a ton of electrolytes. Powdered Gatorade, Liquid IV, those are all great. Drip Drop, Pedialyte, bring something because you're going to be sweating for most of you you're not, you're not usually sweating like this. This is going to be completely, it's going to be aberrant behavior for your body. It's going to be completely different. It's going to be completely unknown. And it's going to, you're going to sweat a ton. And all that sweat takes all the salts and electrolytes with it. And you're probably not eating very nutritive food because you probably didn't listen and you probably didn't bring a balanced diet. Or you just can't have a balanced diet because you've been too busy to eat. So you need to replenish those salts in your body, those minerals somehow so those electrolyte supplements are great um, they also take away uh, and kind of flavoring you know i know mio the little squeeze bottles or anything like that some of them even have caffeine in them others have you know all sorts of features whatever but have something like that because one you're going to need to replenish all those electrolytes in your body and i can't stress that enough but two you're going to want to cover the disgusting taste of whatever you're using to to clean your water like it or not some do you know you might end up drinking from someone else's water jug you might end up just using something 
you weren't planning on using in a pinch and you thought you were going to use your fancy no flavor whatever tablets and instead you use the cheap little vietnam era ones the little pot of aqua or whatever they're called and uh someone forgot to put the the iodine like taste suppressant in it so now it tastes like balls so i highly recommend you have something with flavoring in it um because if you're if you don't want to drink the water then you're not going to drink the water and if you're not drinking the water guess what now you're dehydrated and now you're dealing with a whole different set of issues that you shouldn't be dealing with and finally, I recommend that everyone takes wet wipes. Uh, like I said earlier, I got permethrin on my forehead, and I, I, don't know, I don't know if it was a permethrin or not, but something on my forehead had some sort of reaction to my skin, and it didn't, they didn't like each other. So being able to clean up my face a little bit was great. Um, there are no showers. I, I just, just put that out there. This isn't a place where you go. This isn't a gentleman's course. Um, if you're in the Army... You, you, you kind of know what I mean by that. You're, you're going to be out there in the field. You're going to be out there stinking it up. Uh, get used to it. So if you want to feel clean or if you want it dirty, you know, you want to get the dirt off of you, bring wet wipes. Have a, have a way to store them away. Bring a trash bag too. Make sure you're, you're not keeping trash anywhere, but bring wet wipes. Wipe your face. Wipe your hands before you eat. You know, whatever. Wipe clean uh, grid reference guides. Wipe your ass. I don't care. Bring them. They're important. Um... These are just like these are like some of like the the smaller little things that are definitely big quality life improvements. So